Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. It's Saturday night. I got my RC. We're going to learn some stuff tonight. Trying to stay from away from the Dayquil and try to do just the RC tonight. I've been Dayquil free for two days. We're about over that hump. So let's see who all is here. We got a whole bunch of people in the house. We got 28 people here. So, uh, what we're going to do tonight is uh, talk about what I've done this week. And this week, I've got a lot done. Uh, but the one recurring thing that kept coming up this week, and I and I, I don't know if it was, uh, I think Steve, I don't know how long ago it was, Ventari did a, a puzzle video, but Steve Ventari had a puzzle video that people were asking me questions about. And then Rich had a puzzle video. But I had uh, four or five people contact me this week at hobowithwood.com with questions about puzzles and about kerf with their puzzles. And uh, I've not done any puzzles. But, uh, so I, I was like, okay, well, let's dive into this. Let's figure it out. So I went and watched Ventori's video, and I went and watched Rich's video, and they're completely different. They're they're not alike in, in any way. Uh, and that goes to show that there is not just one way to do things in light burn. And there are different things you can do, different ways you can accomplish the same outcome. And getting there this way versus that way doesn't make this way right and that way wrong or that way left and that way right. It doesn't matter. If you get there, you get there. But the first person that contacted me this week was they were making Valentine's Day puzzles for children. And it was only going to be like a, a four piece puzzle, but they weren't getting the puzzle was too tight. They didn't want it to be as tight of a fit for children or young kids. They really wanted it to be a, you know, an easy to fit together piece. And then the next person was, uh, wasn't for children, but Wanted to, they wanted to, their curve on their laser was just too tight. They couldn't get it the puzzle to fit together easily. So they wanted to add a little bit more curve to it, but they couldn't figure out why they the curve wasn't working. They they were they were adding curve in the cuts and layers, but no result. wasn't doing anything. So I got into that, and then I looked at um, Rich's video and seen how he had done it in that video on YouTube, which was different than what he has in his art library. So a couple different ways to do that. That's how I got into dealing with Kerf and to dealing with puzzles. Uh, and then I also ran into, I had to do a job on the Roly this week that was going to require uh, precision. So we use the Roly. Repeatability with that precision, I was doing. Uh, I, I, I needed to be able to en engrave the same job over and over and over again. And I wanted to be able to just pick up my product, lay the new, new one down, hit start button, pick the product up, lay a new one down, hit start button. Problem was, the item that I was engraving was so tall, so thick, that the laser module could not raise high enough to clear it with the honeycomb on there. I do not have the jig table, but even if I had the jig table, that would have still been too tall. The jig table, I think, is a little bit smaller or thinner than the honeycomb, but even that would have made it too thick. So I had to come up with a workaround, and I'm going to show you that, and it's something that's really cool, and I shared it with uh, Q, uh, Leo, as I, I refer to him as Q, and he really liked it and thought that might be something that uh, Roly might be looking at actually developing and bringing it to the market. Uh, he even used the word patentable, which, yeah. I, so uh, I'll show you what I did and what you could do, too. I mean, I did it. If I did it, anybody can do it. How I got around that. And then uh, I've got some new projects. Um this one, this is going to be the, for those tuning in tonight on the live stream, this will be the file that will be downloadable free 
tonight uh, for those catching the live stream. Uh, and I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I'm going to do it for anybody catching me tonight live. This will be free. Now, it's not It's not on the website now, so if you go look for it, it ain't going to be there. But it, it'll be up before we end the stream. And it'll be free until probably midnight and uh, Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll go to half off, 50% off uh, until probably Monday. And then at regular price after Monday. This is a really nice piece. Uh, and I'm, <laughs> I put this one together rather hurriedly. And the finish on it is not what it would be if I was going to be selling it, but I'm, it works for presentation purposes. Uh, show you the piece, and then we'll talk about the design in a little bit. Uh, this is a six-layer compass, six layers. And I've got uh, the, the lighting doesn't show the colors real good in here, but I've got pink, red, white, and there's a purple in the very back. And then a spacer, which raises all that up off in a natural birch underneath it. Uh, and then on the sides, they're finished with banding. And then I messed, I, I messed up and put the hanger or put my backing board on the upside down. So it was supposed to have my logo on, on it. My logo is up here because I glued it on upside down. But I've got a keyhole hanger that you cut out and you can hang this on the wall or you can put it in a easel and but that's going to display really well but this file will be free in a little bit and we're going to show you this in light burn and how all that works and what you need to be aware of as far as the banding uh that's about the only thing you really have to adjust now this is 290 by 290 millimeters it's just under a tw uh, 12 inches and because of how intricate and the the cuts are in the inner parts of that compass. I don't know that I'd go much lower than that. Uh, and then I've got discounts. This is uh, what I did. Uh, I did this around Halloween, but I call this one uh, shot through the heart because it's got the, the barrel of a six shooter and it's got hearts uh, all around, in and around it too. Uh, hearts, 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 but that's shot through the heart. And that one's only three layers, and that one's going to be on sale on the website. But let's see. Uh, I pinned one website to the top that you guys are going to, if you haven't scrolled all the way to the top of the comments, there should be a comment up there about, uh, and I ain't even going to, if I try to say this, drop, I don't know, D-R-A-R-A-D-E-C-H. It's the website for the uh puzzle jigsaw puzzle generator it's a free jigsaw puzzle generator we're going to look at that and then we're also going to look at boxes.py and i don't like box generators but there is a tool in boxes.py that is going to be very very useful in helping to, to determine the kerf on your laser and i've talked about kerf a little bit in the past and uh others have shown you know, a simple, you cut out a simple rectangle and put, you know, 10 cuts in there and then slide all those individual pieces together, measure that gap, divide it by 10, and that's your kerf. Well, that is your kerf for that vertical cut. And your diode is not a circle cut. It's going to have, it's a rectangular shape. So you're going to have a wider and narrower on X and Y. They're not going to be uniform. And I'm going to show you that here in just a few minutes. Um, so let's look here now and just keep in mind, guys, uh, if you've got specific questions, I'm going to stop ever so often and look for any questions that are in the comments, preface your question with a question mark first question mark. Are you single <laughs> question mark? you know, first put a question preceding the question and uh, that will help bring that to my attention and we'll go from there. But let's go. So we're here. Well, I kind of, kind of stall a little bit and make sure we get a bunch of people on here before we go into any depth, any detail. So 
Let's just see who's here. If anybody's got any immediate questions. Hope everybody's staying dry and warm. It's terrible rainy here right now. Uh, da, 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 da. Everybody just saying hello to everybody and getting a weather check. Uh, lots of familiar faces in here. Love seeing everybody here. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, I don't know if I have. Oh, I've seen oh, Jack is here. Jack is a regular. And uh, I see here William Coleman. He's uh, he's a he's a local. I don't know him, but if he's local and he's in Gaston County, he's he's either a redneck or he's related to one. Uh, I've been thinking we're going to we're going to have to get some uh, a local group together to get together maybe once once a month and just go hang out at the uh, either even if it's nothing more than just going over to what's that Golden Corral. We can sit down and have a buffet and big a bunch of tables together and everybody just sit around and chew the fat because that's what their stakes are. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Here's, uh, uh, da, 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 da. question mark. Did you get my heart picture? I've got a bunch of heart pictures. Uh, let me, let me just jump over here real fast to Gmail. Uh, no, uh, delete. Uh, I got a whole bunch, a bunch of people have shared what they've done, uh, with the, the different heart designs. And I really love seeing people taking, in fact, there is one that I'm going to share with you. It's not the heart, but I've, I've, this one I've saved because I loved it so much. And you guys are going to lo love what this, this viewer did with the file. So let's close out that. Um, uh, I can remember. I can remember how. I can remember how not to cut touching, remove overlapping lines. All right, we're going to talk about that when we're dealing with kerf, because if you've got your remove overlapping lines turned on, uh, and you're in the habit of butting up everything close to each other or against each other and removing those overlapping lines. If you start using kerf, it's going to be a problem. And we're going to talk about that in just a couple minutes here. Uh, as you know, I just ordered the Roku 30. Yay. Craig's here. And yes, he got him a 30 coming. Uh, is uh, I just ordered Roku 30. Is the Lightburn software the or, or uh, it? I'm pretty sure it uses uh, Gerbil, sends Gerbil through the com, the console to the laser. Uh, pretty sure that's how it works. Now, I'm I'm proficient with using this software, and I can get really creative. But when it comes into the the, the back end technical stuff, and it's above my head. Uh, Okay. Uh, do you sell the files or do you just sell the finished item? Actually, I don't sell many finished items. Uh, I I sell a few when people can come here and pick them up. But I hate shipping stuff because of the potential of damage uh, and and or claimed damage. You don't even know because it's you know, six states away or, you know, six hours away and, oh, it's all tore up, can't do anything. You know, you insure it for all, but for, just in case, but that's a mess because I shipped one piece all the way to California and he sent me a picture of the box that it was shipped in. And this was, uh, you know, like a pizza box that was, had everything stuffed and covered in foam and, and packed and even wire tied down. I had it wired tied to another piece of cardboard inside the pizza box and everything wired strapped down. Like you, like you see some of the toys you get that you can't ever get open at Christmas time. This thing was secured in the best way possible. 
It didn't matter. It looked like they ran over it with a forklift three, four times back over it and then just slammed the forks up and down on it. Uh, this thing was totally crushed. But by the time he let me know, and then uh, I got the post office involved, they're like, yeah, well, you just need to bring the box and the package and everything to the post office so we can file the claim. He done got rid of everything. And if you don't have it, then there's nothing you can do. Even the photographs won't work. And so uh, it's it's a mess. I don't like I don't like uh, selling finished goods. And I hate doing. I'll spend I'll spend all night with all hundred of you guys, no problem. But I don't want to deal much with twenty people at a fair. I don't want to see ten people uh, surround me at a fair. I just. I don't like being around a bunch of people. I don't like being in crowds. Put me in front of a crowd. I'll perform at the Super Bowl. I'll do Super Bowl halftime show. No problem. But don't put me in the stands at the 50-yard line or even in the nose. I don't put, don't put me in the stands. Put me down in the middle where I can see everybody. Did everybody see me? No problem. Uh, did you? Did you do a Bigfoot design? Yes, I did do a Bigfoot design last week. Uh, and I'm going to show you what one of the viewers did with that. I loved it, loved it, love it. Uh, would the curve be the... No, well, now see, that this is a good question. Would the curve be the same on a quarter-inch plywood as it is on three-millimeter plywood? And we're going to talk about that. We're going to discuss it. Um Gonna gonna uh gonna be some surprising things. This is this is gonna be a perfect example of quit asking for settings. Ain't gonna do you no good. Ain't gonna do you no good. You need to be testing and testing and testing. You need to know your laser and you need to know the material you're working with. Uh the settings are at best a, a launching point, maybe, uh, because everybody's laser. This this Roly, the kerf on it is completely different than the kerf on my uh, Creality Falcon 2. I had the Creality Falcon 2 dialed in. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This one has given me a little bit more difficulty because I think it's got a slightly, I don't think, I know it has, it's, it's more rectangular with the laser than the Creality is. The Creality didn't fight me as much as this did. Uh, Stacy got a long question here. Has anyone else experienced that when doing offset and light burn that the software is not replicating the offset exactly i do have all the right buttons ticked but still have to correct the result all right uh there you might think you might have stuff set up just right and it, and you might but it might be the way that you've got everything uh on your file when you send it to the laser and we're gonna i'm gonna show you all, a, a lot of things we're gonna go over a lot of stuff i'm going just want to make sure. Okay, good. I'm down at the bottom. No more questions. Uh, and what's Chris? Chris is a, 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 a wealth of knowledge. Kerf is same as material test. New one for each different material and size. Amen. All right. So before we jump into that, I just wanted, I showed you those two. I told you about my problem with having to replicate or, or had to engrave that piece. It was too wide for, too tall rather. I couldn't get the laser module high enough. I took the honeycomb out of the rolly. I left the bottom in and then made my own jig. These holes line up with the pins that stick up from the bed of the rolly. And this was positioned on my work area for the piece that I needed to engrave. So that snapped right into the bed of the lasermatic. Now I've got a fixed position that's already aligned perfectly where my, my design in Lightburn. So all I had to do was lay a piece in, hit start button, 
pick a piece up, hit lay, see him, hit start button. Just, oh, just real quick, knock them out in no time. And I did not even have to put on the, the, the piece was so big, I did not have to put the uh, Z extension on. So that's how thick the piece was. The Z extension was not needed. And uh, this worked perfect. And uh, we'll see if Q feels like it's something they're, they're going to develop. But I could see where this might come in real handy uh, for folks doing larger or thicker pieces. So I thought that was really cool. Only problem with the this this file here is it's perfect, and I may be doing hundreds of these. I hope. Uh, so I, this jig is going to be perfect for me every time I need it. But I talked with Q, uh, like the jig table or the jig book table yeah, he has already. You can position different anchors all around it and stuff like that. Doing something similar, but that sits down in the base of the. Uh, MK2 or the MK1, uh, but that was pretty good. Uh, all right. Added the MK2 30 watt material library and found something I had not seen before. Under Pine, there is an inlay option. Have you used it? And if so, is there a way to make it not such a tight fit? Um, I've been doing inlays for you know uh, over a year, and I do a lot of inlays in pine. Pine is not the my favorite because pine will it be real soft pulp wood in one place, and then when you get to the 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 ring of the grain, it, you've got a high ridge that sticks up. Uh, I do a lot of inlays with hardwoods, not pine. I really don't like doing them in pine, um, but I have not seen the settings you're talking about. And as Chris said. Test, 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 and if if you're if it's too tight, then when you once you learn what we're getting ready to talk about here with kerf, you'll know how to adjust that and make it not as tight. So let's let's go to the light burn first before we go over to the puzzle generation and stuff like that. We're going to go jump in here to light burn, and the first thing I'm going to look at is the first question I had this week was he was trying to make that four piece puzzle for these you know real young children and he needed to have a really good kerf on it so he wanted to have a real loose fitting puzzle piece so that a, a small child a toddler could put these puzzles together and he had used kerf he was familiar with kerf and he added kerf to that layer but nothing was happening could not make it couldn't nothing was changing it didn't look like so I said, send me the file. Well, let me see what you're working with. What's going on? And what he had was the puzzle, four-piece puzzle, and then the vertical line and then a horizontal line for the jigsaw cutouts. But this was a line, this was a line, and this was the rectangular shape around the perimeter. You cannot add kerf to a line, number one. You cannot add kerf to a line. When you add or subtract kerf in light burn, when you do an inward kerf or an outward kerf, you're going inside the line or outside the line. And if it's a single line and you're telling you want an outward kerf, is this outward or is this outward? Light burn doesn't know, so it don't do anything. You cannot add kerf to a line. It can only add kerf to an object. Okay, that's number one. Um, then let's uh, let's just jump over here to Lightburn. Jump over to Lightburn. Uh, switch, 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 switch that. Nope, wrong button. We'll get there. Still learning this thing. I want that one, and I want to switch. And there we go. All right. And screen looks yellow again. I don't know why that is. I thought I had that fixed. All right. And I'm going to turn off my grid. Turn it off. Say okay. All right. Now, if I draw a straight line, 
put that, select it, put that on the black layer where we can see it better. There we go. And actually, we'll go ahead and put it on a cut layer. So there we go. And now I'm in line mode. And I come over here and I open up my cuts and layers. I've got zero curve on here. If I tell it, I want to add, um, we're going to go big, a point to curve. I want to add a point to outward kerf. And if, if I'm going to, I'm coming back to me now. I forgot to go as basic as I could because not everybody knows what kerf is. If you think of a table saw, you got the circular blade that's standing straight up and you run your wood through it. The width of that blade, a lot of times it's about an eighth of an inch thick. When you run that piece of material across that table saw and that blade cuts right down through that, that material, you removed an eighth of an inch or the width of that blade of material. It's gone. Because if you had a 12-inch a, a piece of wood and you split it, it was still 12 inches minus that width of that blade that just cut away. Well, that was your kerf. And you're trying to determine, and your laser does the same thing when it's cutting. It, your material size isn't changing, but when you cut that out, that laser is burning away a certain amount of material, and you need to know how much material is being burned away if you're going to want to make a really tight fit or if you want to make a loose fit. And depending on if you want it tighter or looser, you might go, and, and if, if you've been doing woodwork or been around people doing woodwork, if you've got one person who's measuring and one person who's cutting, you might hear the person operating the saw ask the person who's measuring, do I cut the line or leave the line? And what he's asking, if they measured out a piece that's supposed to be 48 inches, did they measure to 48 inches and mark right at 48? And if they did, then they need to leave that line because that's 48 inches. Or did they measure out just past 48? Now they can cut the line. And when they cut the line, that will leave 48 inches. So when they ask, do I cut the line or leave the line? They're wanting to know about the curve for that saw. How much, where do they need to put the saw blade? So that's what curve is. And when you're doing something like jigsaw puzzles, if you're cutting outside the line, uh, then that's going to make it a tighter fit. If, if, because if you if you had a, two rectangular pieces and you cut outside of each one, well, the piece actually got bigger. And we're going to show you that in light burn. So if you cut outside the line, you're you're taking a, doing an outward curve. You're adding material to the piece you're cutting off to make up for what the laser cut off. And if you go an inward curve, it's going to make it a looser fit. And so that's what the, the gentleman was trying to do was he was trying to do an inward curve and make it a looser fit, a sloppy fit for the, for the kids. All right. So I just added a point to outward curve to this line. And if I go into preview, all you see is a straight line. You can't see anything. It's not going to do a, a, a darn thing to that because it's just a line. It don't know do I go inside or outside. But if I take and I draw a square, now that square, I'm going to duplicate it by holding control and hitting the letter D. So those two squares are identical and, and they're directly on top of one another. So if I go to preview, Actually, I'm going to make sure I've got them both selected and go to preview. You only see one square because they're identical, and that's what you would expect to see, correct? All right. Now watch what happens. I'm going to select one of these, and I'm going to put it on the blue layer, put it in line mode, and make sure it has zero kerf. And it's got, so we got zero kerf there. Say okay, and I've got a point two outward curve on this one. And if we zoom in here, these are still the same two squares. They look identical. One's right on top of each other. I have not moved them. But now if I select both of these again, and I come in here and look at the preview, 
First, you're like, wait a minute, I don't see nothing. Well, if you scroll in tight enough, you will. There's your kerf. The one with the kerf added to it is out here on the outside. It added 0.2 millimeters to that square to make it cut outside the line. And I bet you a lot of you didn't realize you can see kerf in preview. But that's how you can see your kerf. Now, seeing it really isn't going to do much for you, except for if you've someone asked about uh, they forgot how to remove overlapping lines or. Uh, well, if you come over here to uh, optimization settings. Optimization settings down here, remove overlapping lines. Most of the time I have that turned on. So that when I'm cutting out a project, if I've got two straight lines or box or whatever, and I'm, and I'm not adding any curve to it, then I can butt everything right up against each other and it will remove those overlapping lines. But when you add curve and you butt those up against each other, you can do that on Lightburn. On the screen, you're going to butt them right up against each other. And light and and this is uh, this is a shortcoming I think in Lightburn's uh, programming. I think Lightburn should be smart enough to not let this happen. But this is what happens if you try to butt your materials up against each other. And this Stacy might be what you were having problems with. Maybe if you were butting things up against each other and then you add kerf to it and things were just not fitting right. Well, here's why. I'm going to leave that on right now and let's see here. I'm actually just going to delete all this. I'm going to draw square and a rectangle. I'll select them both whole and do alt shift V. Nope, not alt shift V, alt shift H. Let's undo that. Alt shift H. There we go. Alt shift H butts those right up against each other. And if I look now at the preview, because I'm on my blue layer, if I go to my preview and look, that's just one line coming down through there. It's not going to be a problem. I've got remove and I still have my remove overlapping overlapping lines on. If I watch this cut out, it's going to cut out that whole rectangle right there. And I'm going to hit play. And we'll speed it up a little bit. And now it's going to jump up to there. You see that jumped real fast up to there. And all it's going to have to do is cut out one, two, three sides of that square. And now it's done. Because when it cut this rectangle out, it already cut this side of that smaller square. So, uh, I'm going to come over to Lightburn and, or not Lightburn, come back to the stream and see if anybody's got any questions yet before I get too far down this path. Because I'll have questions. I'll make it, oh, uh, what was that question about? I don't remember. All right. Uh, all right. Good, good, good. All right. Yeah. I forgot to mention the numbers. I see you guys. You, got, I got some regulars here. This is awesome. I appreciate it. A lot of, I know that a lot of, so uh, for those that are new, uh, you put a one, two, three, four, every time you learn something, Something you didn't know prior to me just saying it. Oh, I know that. I did. I just learned that. Number one, you learn something new. Number two, learn something new. Number three, and the only reason we do that is because it keeps the chat feed rolling, and YouTube recognizes that that people are paying attention, people are contributing to the stream, and it helps with the chat rate. It it's all analytics. It has. You know, and it also just lets me know that I'm not wasting my time. People are getting value from the time we're here. To, so, so yeah, I forgot to mention that. Put a one. Put a, every time you learn something, put put a number down there. So we got a lot, lots of ones, lots of ones, lots of twos now. Uh, it yellow, so you can see what item will be liked when finished. I got something going on with this this uh, the output from this machine I've got. 
that the, the video has got a yellow hue to it. Uh, all right, lots of twos, lots of threes. Uh, uh, Patrick sent me. Okay, oh, well, welcome, Ike. Uh, I get. Uh, I'm guessing you're watching Patrick's live stream. Uh, thank you, Patrick, for sending them. Hope you enjoy what's going on here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Craig, uh, well, I just answered that, Craig. Uh, you're not an idiot. I just forgot. I'm the idiot because I didn't tell people to do it, and you didn't know what was going on. Uh, <laughs> I rode the frequency to your channel. Yeah, I, I hope they, they do well. I, I enjoy watching those. And he had a new toy last night that makes me so mad that he's got one. He got one of the bamboo 3D printers, Squirrel. <laughs> and man, when he was printing out that Benchy last night, I think that's what you call it. It looked like it was in fast forward. It was... <laughs> It was like, golly, it's nice. Uh, all right. Looking for question marks, question marks, question marks. Okay. Here's a question, Carl. If I draw a 50 by 50 box in Lightburn and have a 0.08 laser dot when I cut the item will be smaller than 50 by 50. Uh, yeah, uh, probably just very slightly. Um, and it's going to, well, you'll see, I've, I got some interesting test results here in just a second. The, the difference is almost, almost immeasurable. Uh, you probably couldn't measure it with a regular tape measure. With with a set of mics, you could tell the difference. I will have to check that, but I was doing a heart inside of a heart, and the one and the one inside the offset heart, I had to fix the point at the bottom of the heart. Oh, I know what that was. It's because you had rounded turned on only when you did your offset. If you had your regular heart to begin with, how do you do that? Y'all do that crazy. I don't do this stuff. I, 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 anyway, you had a heart and then you selected it and then you did an offset to create the inner piece. When you do an offset, you have three different options. You had rounded as your option. If you would have had corner as your option, it would have kept that to a point. But for that reason, when I'm doing, which I've been working with a lot of hearts here to, uh, in the last few days, I don't do offsets of hearts. I just select my original heart and just shrink it down to the size that I want it. And by just shrinking it, it keeps everything exactly. It doesn't distort it because even when you do an offset on your round, it can distort those dimensions and it can get kind of funky looking. It can get really squeezed together at the top and not look good. So when I'm doing hearts, I don't do offsets. I just shrink it. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 do. Question marks. Uh, yeah, I'm not real sure what curve offset question mark setting don't know what that means if you clarify and then put a question mark in front of your question let me know what you uh your you up on the jig table does it sit lower does it sit lower than the honeycomb uh no don't follow that either the jig table that comes with the MK2, I think, is thinner than the than the honeycomb. But even if I had the jig table that you can get that sits up top, it would still have been too tall for what I was working on. Um, but I had it as a corner, not rounded. Uh, then maybe the heart had didn't maybe it didn't come to a complete point maybe it had a little bit of a radius on there already and when you did the 
uh, offset, it just exaggerated that radius. It had to have if it you either had to have it in rounded or it had to have had a radius on it instead of a point. It's about the only way I can think that would happen. I might be wrong, but those are the two most likely reasons that you would have a rounded piece when you do an offset. It either already had a radius on there and then the offset exaggerated it or you had rounded checked when you did it. Uh, but double check it. But either way, uh, if you just select it and shrink it down, you don't have that issue. And I, and I find that offsets with my hearts are the ones that give me my most trouble. Uh, usually when I'm doing, if I'm doing rectangles or circles, I'll do an offset in a minute, but not with, not with the, uh, not with the heart. I don't do offset. And hey, there's Patrick. But yes, jig table is lower than honeycomb. Yes. Uh, but it still wouldn't have been low enough because I had, uh, I needed almost a half of an inch or more to clear the item that I was engraving with the laser all the way up. It still wouldn't have worked with the jig table. Uh, when you had the two squares, red and blue, the kerf offset on one in the display window, it looked like one had rounded corners. Does kerf offset round the corners? Uh, I noticed that too, but I don't, I, it's not, not something that I've ever, ever noticed, but it did look like in the preview that that had a little bit of a radius on it, but I've not, I don't have an issue with that being the outcome when I do it. Uh, but I did notice that preview looked like it was rounded over. What is the purpose of using curve the first time of ever hearing it? All right. Well, I used to make fun of Rich, the Louisiana hobby guy, because he ever what whenever he shows a video of him assembling his boxes, he's over there on his work table and he's got a hammer out and he's hammering his boxes together and using little or no glue. Well, I started learning how to use the kerf and dialing in and getting my kerf exactly right. And uh, uh, this is a hammer I made this is in case of emergency. Uh, this was the red, what was the powder coating? And then I, on this one is, but if you're the LA hobby guy, use it on every damn thing. Because that's what he did. He used it all the time. But after I learned how to use my kerf correctly, I started taking a page out of his book, another one, because I've learned so much from him over the last two years. I have gotten it down to where now I can assemble my boxes with no glue whatsoever, and you ain't getting them back apart. You ain't going to get them. They'll break before you get them apart. Uh, and you can do that. And, and the test I'm getting ready to show you that you can use to go and find your curve and the headaches and the obstacles that you're going to have to look for, it's all going to be evident when I show you these pieces when we walk over here to the work table. Um, is there a precise way to resize other than using control and dragging the corner dot? Yes, absolutely. Uh, just if, if, all right, squirrel, uh, real quick, I'll answer this for old guy. Cause old guys, he's, he's a regular, regular too. We're going to switch over real fast. If you're, if you've got this square and, it's 70 millimeters. You're right up here in the top. You know it's 70 millimeters. And if you're wanting to make that, uh, you don't want to drag in your, your squares. If you want to make a copy of it, you can say Control D, duplicate it, and then just come right up here and tell it what exactly you want it to be. You want it to be 69.5 millimeters with my aspect ratio locked and just hit Enter. It just dropped that down a half a millimeter. You can tell it exactly what you want it to be. And if you don't want it to be a square, unlock your aspect ratio if you didn't draw a square. And now you can tell this one to be 65 millimeters high. And so you can tell it exactly what you want it to be. All right. Um, uh, Mike, uh, 
Can you show how to cut a circle in four parts? Yeah, but uh, I want to. I don't want to get down too many rabbit holes. I want to stay with Kerf right now. Um, why would I? And and if we're still, if, if this turns into a marathon, and I didn't plan on it being, but if it turns into a marathon and we're here, I'll. And after we're done on this, I'll. We'll go down whatever we need to go down. Why would I have difficulty making slots, but tabs work flawlessly, even if I inform line place? If if uh, inform line. Mm, don't f well after I show you these we you might in fact I might need to stop taking questions and show you these test and it might answer a lot of these questions uh with node editing how do you split two shapes part that are joined by lines hope uh yeah uh any questions that don't revolve around kerf Hold those until the end, and if we're not gone too long and you're still here, we'll go. We'll get to those. So I'm not ignoring these, but I don't want to get gone too far. Uh, so curve questions. Back to the inlay. If I put an outward curve on, say, inlaid clock numbers. What happens to the numbers like A and Z? Uh, it's going to, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, but you know what you can do to find out? Use your preview screen. Make that eight and just make a duplicate. Put it on a different layer like I did those squares. Show one with kerf and one without and select them both and make sure you select them both because if you're only selecting one, you're only going to see that one you have selected in the preview screen. But create two eights, put them on different layers, put them right on top of each other, add kerf to one of them, and go look at your preview screen and see what it does to it. Uh, I've never had an, an issue with my inlays. Kerf always does what it's supposed to do. Uh, will that work with odd shapes? Not sure how to resize them. Uh, as far as changing the size on them, uh, it that's only going to change your height and width. If, if it's a star and you've got all these different, it's going to change it exactly. If you're going to go from a, a, if it's three inches wide and you tell it to go to two and a half inches, it's going to draw everything down two and a half inches. I, I, you're I don't know about how it's going to, you're, it's going to keep it all, as long as you have your padlock locked, it'll keep it all proportional. Uh, all right. Now, I showed you switch. I showed you what happens when you have two pieces. All right. Now, I'm going to align these together horizontally, and they have no kerf added to them so that when we look at them in preview, you see the lines just like you would expect them to. Now, let's put this on the red layer that has the point to outward kerf. I didn't move these. They're exactly in the same place, just on a different layer. And this has the point to outward kerf. Now, when we go look at the preview, and you just, I, that's showing a radius on there. And I, I'm not, I've not had an issue with a fitment because of a radius adding on there from a kerf. I've never noticed that before, but that's not what I'm wanting to show you. But now you see how these, they were overlapping lines. Now they're not because, and, let's, and I'll show you, let's do this. Uh, I should have just let, duplicate those, control D, duplicate, and put them back on the blue layer. Now select all four of those. So we have two on the blue and two on the red, and we go look at the preview. See there, this one in the middle, that is the overlapping lines. 
So if we come up here where you can see them, so this is the original with the overlapping lines, but when you add kerf to it, it just pushed that out 0.2 millimeters and out two millimeters. This one went out two millimeters. Now they're overlapping each other. So now when you go to cut that out, it's going to not, it's not going to cut out properly. That's going to be a problem. So you do not want to use remove overlapping lines when you're trying to do kerf uh, or even try to because Lightburn cannot adjust for that, at least not to my knowledge. So if I delete my blue layer and go back to my layer just with the kerf on it. If I want to prevent that from doing that, I'm going to have to make sure that I've got that spaced apart far enough so that whenever I send it to the laser, there's room for it and it's not you're you're not going to be able to save that time that I'm aware of in order to use kerf. And uh, Chris saying, Kerf works on the basis of a laser being a router slash drill bit. So when it hits a corner, it will default, uh, it will be rounded over by default. So that's with Kerf. And whenever I use Kerf to make my boxes, and that's when I do make my boxes, I'm using Kerf almost 90% of the time now. It uh, That's never an issue. But what can be an issue is finding your kerf. And I, I told you one of the websites we want to look at is boxes.py. Boxes.py. It is a box generator. A lot of you guys may be familiar with it. A lot of you guys may be having problems with it. And I'm going to show a few things in here that you may go, Oh, okay. That just made life easier with boxes.py. But after you get doing enough of these and doing them yourself, you I encourage you not to use the box generators. Make your slots and tabs yourself because there are so many problems that come from using boxes.py and possibly the other. I've not used MakerCase much, so I'm not sure how much MakerCase works. But... Uh, Let's jump over to boxes.py and show you. Um, let's see, before I do that, I got a question mark here. What if you did the curve first, then a line? It doesn't matter. It does because when you're on the design screen, when you add the curve to it, it's it's not there. The, the adding the kerf is something that is sent to the laser in the controls in the in the layer settings, not in the display. So when you align it on display, it's not it's not taking kerf into consideration. And that's why I said that's kind of a shortcoming on light burns part. You would think that it could and it should, especially if you really want to truly optimize and remove overlapping lines. But when you add kerf, you just you just can't do it. It's the headaches that it would take, like if you know you're adding a point to curve, then you know you, you could actually set, in fact, uh, a squirrel uh, switch. Uh, Alt, Shift, H. Those are aligned perfectly together. And I've added a point to curve. Well, if I wanted to move this uh, over... This is your X and Y position over here. If I was to move it uh, on the X, let's see, I'm, I've never tried this with uh, up here in this one. Can I subtract like I do with the ads? Let's so say subtract 0.2 equals. No, so I had everything selected. Select just one and add 0.2. All right, yeah. So now I have moved that over 0.2 millimeters. And now when I look at them on the preview, and this has got the curve to it, because it's I did a 0.2 outward curve, I might would need to move that another two 
because this was going out to and this one's going out to. So it's still probably going to be overlapping, but let's look at the preview. Yeah, see, they're still overlapping. So if I moved it one more time, plus 0.2, uh, I got to do just the one, plus 0.2, and now select on both and look at the preview. So now there, they're no longer overlapping. So you, you could do it. You could eliminate overlapping lines. But if you were trying to cut out a box that had six sides to it and you got this and you're going to nest them all together, this and this and this and this, trying to align that and compensate for that all correctly, it'd be just too much work. So it's easier. By the time you try to get all that math figured out and everything set up, it's easier just to let the laser cut it all out. But Lightburn should be able to recognize that and and do that for you. But there may be other issues there where you run into, all right, well, sure, Lightburn will move everything accordingly, but it, it might start pushing stuff off your material. Then that's another problem. So there's there's I'm sure there's a reason that they don't do it. Uh, dee, 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 dee. Why not use the offset tool to simulate the curve and avoid the curve setting weaknesses? Again, I'm, I think I'm following what you're saying, and yeah, you could probably make that work. But again, that's just a whole bunch of more steps. Uh, not something... Like I said, there's not there's not one way to do anything. And the stuff that I'm showing you tonight is just the way that I've learned and the way that I figured out how to make them work. There are other ways to accomplish the same thing. If you were here in the beginning, like I said, you can get there six different ways. This is just the way uh, that I do it. Uh, and yes, wouldn't use the docking function with the paddings. Yes, uh, you could do that too. I think it's just another way of doing it. Uh, it, but now that I think about it, because Lightburn is not smart enough to know, yeah, if, if you use your docking tools to dock that at 0.4 millimeters away from each other, so you're taking in consideration that 0.2 outward curve on both pieces, they're docked away from each other. So Lightburn is not going to recognize that as an overlapping line. They are away from each other. When it goes to the laser and it cuts it out, they will be overlapping. So you will not have a deformed output. But the whole idea was to eliminate the overlapping line. But Lightburn is not going to recognize that as an overlapping line. So it's all irrelevant. It's all moot anyway. So don't even bother with it. Just leave enough space between them and be done with it. Yeah. Light bulb. Okay. Now, let's go over to the work table. Or actually, go to boxes.py so I can show you what you need to do and where to get it. Uh, go over to boxes.py, switch, boxes, boxes, boxes. Come on. Boxes. Not the generator. We want boxes.py. All right, boxes.py. And if you come down here to parts and samples. And while we're here, there's a few things in here that you might find uh, useful. I've seen it in Facebook. A lot of you asking about the hold downs. Well, right here is uh, the laser hold down. These are those little... Uh, L-shaped corner pieces that you can use through your your honeycombs to lock down your place. Here you can go in and set up and create and cut out your own. But what we want to look at right now for finding your kerf is this burn test. So if you select the burn test and wait for it to open up, ding, dong, ding, dong. There we go. All right. 
you are going to be able to put in a couple of different things. Now, first thing I want to bring to everybody's attention on boxes.py. When you're going to, if you're using boxes.py for a box generator or anything else, and you're going to be using Lightburn, come right down here to your inner corners and change that from loop to corner. That's going to eliminate 50% of your problems. It ain't going to eliminate all of them, but it's going to eliminate half your problems when using boxes.py in Lightburn. Make your inner corners corners and not loops. And whenever you go to download it, you can download change your format from an SVG to an actual Lightburn file. But I'm going to leave it in SVG for right now so you can see what's going on. Also, you can when you do this, it'll download a preview for you to look at. I'm going to leave all of my settings settings the same. I'm going to change or I'm increasing my burn value by uh yeah, by 0 0.1 or 0.01 rather. And I'm going to do two pairs. No, uh I'm going to do one pair. One pair. My thickness is 3 millimeters. We'll do an SVG so we can just look at this and we'll just say generate. And it's going to open up this file for us to look at. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I started right here, uh, right here. My burn, burn correction is 0.1. And here is the first 0.1 right here. And then I told it to increase by a 0.01. So over here is a 0.11. Here's a 0.12. Here's a 0.13. Each one of these is slightly larger by one tenth, one hundredth of a millimeter on each side. And this is your male and this is your female. If you wanted to do two pairs, so you, you want two pairs of them, and we're going to start, let's see here, generate. That'll give us two pairs to start with. And if you've never worked with your kerf, you might do two to start out. And here we're starting out with a 0.1, and then there's 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13. There's your male and female. And then over here is your second pair. And it picks up where this one left off. 0.13, here's 0 0.14, 15, 16, and 17, male and female. Now, these are where you can start to determine what your actual kerf is. Most of your laser manufacturers, not all, but a lot of them with the little 10 watt diodes, they'll advertise that you have a 0 0.08 dot size. Dot size is almost completely irrelevant because if you have your laser pre-focused or above optimum focus, then your dot size is gonna change. If you have it sub-focused, below the optimum focus, your dot size is going to change. So how they measured and how they got to their dot size versus what how you set it up and what you feel like is focused, it's going to be a completely different thing. And this is why something why I say it doesn't matter what my settings are, what his settings are. You have to be familiar with your laser and how your laser works and with the material you're working with because it, it ain't gonna, my stuff ain't going to work for you but my test will work for you. So now let's jump over here to the work table where you can see these pieces that I have cut out and how this test actually worked for me. And why is this relevant? These are the tests that I cut out. And we're, remember what started all this was puzzles. And, we're going to talk about that, too, if we're not here all night. But these are Baltic birch cutouts. And these are, they look like they're identical. If There we go. These look like they're identical, but they're not. And I will show you the difference here. But let's start with, um, let's start with this one. 
So we got our male and our female slots and tabs. 0.1 all the way around to a 0.13. Now, if I take these and you put the number, you put taking matching numbers up together, and you want to look for what's going to be a good fit. And if depending on what project you're building, like the, the one guy who was wanting to build puzzles for a toddler, he wants a real sloppy fit. This would actually be even too tight for what he's looking for. But if I'm building boxes, then it ain't going to work for me. That's a, a 1.1 curve outward offset. Now, if I go to a 11.11, uh, that's a little bit tighter. That looks like that looks like that's getting tighter, looking pretty good. 0.11. So 0.12 should be even better. 0.12. Wait a minute. 0.12. Don't work, but a smaller curve, 0.11, that don't make no sense, does it? Actually, it does. And I'm going to show you why, what, what you, and this is part of the headaches of working with curve. Here's a 0.13. And 0.12 fell apart. 1.1 one, one worked pretty good, but 1.3 works even better. And that would be a, a, probably a good fit right there. But why did the 1.2 fall apart and the 1.1 one, one doesn't? Well, let's take this one right here. The one one on that one actually stayed together. So let's take that. Here's one one. Here's one one. Put these together and see what happens. Well, what's the difference? One one. Where are you at? One one. It don't. That don't work. All right. Point one three. Point one three. I'm gonna get in there. Point one three don't fit. One two. And that's tight. That is really tight. So that's point one two. Grab these and put these point one two together. Now I cut these with the same laser. They're cut out of the same three millimeter Baltic birch. So what's the difference? Well, if you notice, I've got this. This H is readable here. And when I pick these up in this orientation, the H is sideways. The difference between these two was how they were laying on the laser. This was cut out on the laser like so. This was cut out on the laser like that. That was the right orientation on the laser. And this was the orientation when this was cut out. So the difference between these is the horizontal and the vertical on the beam. Because here, this 0.12 cut out this way. Here, this 0.12 cut out this way. So that was cut out here and here. So if I haven't lost you, that demonstration right there showed you that the, the spot, the, the beam on this module is rectangular. Because when it was cutting on this axis, it had one kerf or one result that was worked. And when it's cut this way, a different kerf worked. And that was with the three millimeter Baltic birch. Now let's confuse you even more.
And I want to make sure I've got the right stuff here. All right. So this is Paduke. And here, 0.12 worked really good. And make sure we get the right orientations here. So here is the same orientation, 0 0.12, 0 0.12. That worked perfect on this Baltic birch. But when I try to do this to do, it ain't going to go together. It, I, even if I took my hammer to this, I might get it to go together, maybe, but because the duke is so fragile and it will cleave, it's most likely going to break before I ever get that to go together. And to show you, let me, that's how tight that is. Okay. And the only difference, I'm trying to pull these apart now, oh, the only difference is the material. This Baltic birch is spongier and burns away more material than this does. In fact, here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that already began to chip and split from that trying to force that together. So your material is going to change. That's what uh, Chris was saying earlier. You Even if you get your curve dialed in on your laser from, from one material to the next and from one laser to the next, it's going to be completely different. So, this one is a completely different test. And let's see here. 0 0.12 is what worked on the birch. And the 0 0.13 was, uh, this one I think was 1.3. So, yeah. So here was my thinking, all right, 0 0.13 works great there, 0 0.12 works great there, but one was cut on the horizontal, one on the vertical, so, so you know what, put it on a diagonal. I rotated my material so that when this cut out, this line was not cut on the horizontal or vertical, it was cut on a diagonal. And I took the average, the median, it was 0 0.25, 0 0.125. 0.125, and that, boys and girls, is a perfect fit. No glue, nothing holding that together, just friction holding that together, and it'd be something that I would feel good with with using my, my boxes with. And that wouldn't matter when you go to put your box together which way the material was cutting because now you force that laser instead of cutting in a straight line like this here, the laser cut these out on a diagonal axis. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, I hope, I hope I had that on the right camera. Did I, was I showing you that just now? Did I screw up? Did I have the camera in the wrong place? Did you guys see the diagonal or was I off camera? I, yes, all seemed good. Okay. All right. So if you go over to boxes.py, and you get that burn test. You and every laser is going to be different. These were the results that I had with my MK2, the 20 watt. Uh, and instead of laying my material in there like I normally do, where I've got it right up in the bottom corner, I put this one on the table at a 45 degree angle. Forcing, in fact, to go over to the light burn. Uh, and actually, before I go to light burn, let's go back over to 
here, get rid of you. So here's what I was talking about. Change your format to a light burn file. I'm going to do one pair and tell it to generate. And when it does, it's going to show you it's loading, but it should actually just download. Uh, yeah, there, my burn test is downloaded. Now I can just go straight over into light burn, delete all this, and just tell it to import from my download file. Say OK. And there is that file that I just generated. Now, something you need to be aware of when you go to bring this in from, from docs.py. Because each one of these has a different curve on it, these are not boxes. These are not closed shapes. So you could, right now everything's grouped. So if you ungroup it, you can move that line and move this line. And now you've just messed up your piece. Of course, you can always undo. But be aware of that so that whenever you're wanting, like I, I hold my shift button and cl left click there. And now I've got all the black selected. I can put that on my cut layer. Shift click and put that on my engrave layer. But the way that I did that test, I brought this down here. I selected all of that one and put it in a group. Select all of this one and put it in a group. And then I rotated it 45 degrees. Rotated it 45 degrees. Because whenever I was doing my cut earlier, I actually was cutting it out of waste material. And so I just kind of put it where I needed it to be. And then I sent this job out from the laser like this. And that forced the laser to cut all of this on, because on, on that 45 instead of on a straight X and Y axis. Rotating your material on the work bed would not accomplish the same thing because if you didn't rotate the file, it would still be cutting out on the X and Y. Here you're forcing that laser up and down and you're cutting out with that rectangle more than just uh, you would be if you were just doing it on straight X and Y. All right, so we got that done. Delete that, cut and nope and cut. Okay. Uh, any questions on that? Up to because now we're going to jump over to the puzzle page and show you about how to increase kerf on your puzzles. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Chris says you can do much smaller test if you already have if you already do test on that material test uh, if you're talking about actual physical size yeah you you can do smaller sizes this was just I'm working with uh, a bunch of sc scrap materials whatever I had laying around and also older hands I'm just, I don't like working with little stuff but yeah you can do smaller physical smaller test but the, the biggest thing uh, that I want people to realize the X and Y is different, and it may be even more so on some lasers and less so on other lasers, but the one thing that's going to hold true regardless what laser you're working on is your kerf is going to change from material to material. So that's why I say testing is crucial. If you, okay, it's like on my 22-watt uh, uh, Falcon, I know it's a 0.13 when I was doing my boxes with Baltic Birch and I didn't have any problem. This one was a little bit looser with a 0.13. That, and that's what you just seen there. The, the 0.125 worked better. Um, but when I tried to do a box the other day with the Paduke, it wouldn't go together. I was in, and the Paduke, in fact, uh, let's see here. I'm the one that's already chipped. So, no. 
this one. Yeah. So this one was one of the first pieces I put together or cut out with the Paduk. See all that's that's that had ears on it, but whenever I was putting it together, it snapped apart. The Paduk is very very easy to 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 cleave and break. You're not going to do that with plywood. Uh, and if you get your kerf too tight when you're working with something like this, it's just going to break the tabs off and not go together. And so testing your material and knowing what your material's limitations are are crucial. Uh, when do we open the moonshine? When do we open? Uh, the moonshine has actually been opened, but the moonshine is not for enjoyment. The moonshine is part of a job I'm working on, uh, but just for giggles and to, 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 and to know what it tastes like. They've been opened. This is the uh, Revenuers Reserve Blackberry. And uh, this one is the Revenuers Reserve apple pie. Now, you see that name up there on the top? It's John Schneider's Revenuers Reserve. This is John Schneider's moonshine. Just a good old boy. Uh, that John Schneider. Hence the 01. Where is it at? There it is. The 01. There's also the original, which is not in here right now. Uh, but we did... Me, uh, me and a couple buddies, we popped tops off of them, tasted them. I'm not a big fan of blackberry anything, and so that one was the eh, apple pie was pretty good. But the reason the original is not in here right now is I'm making my own flavor. That's to me the, the ori original moonshines with no flavorings. The only purpose for them is so you can make your own flavored stuff. So I'm making my own, but it's all part of another job. The the jig that I had to make was part of that. And that will be revealed hopefully in the next week or two. Uh, uh, question marks. Can you change the laser to cut that way? Not it. What? I have a hard time reading, folks. I really do. I read, but I cannot. My brain don't process it like it used to anymore. That's all after the strokes. Can you change the laser to cut that way? Not Plus, when they're not not in front of my not not in front of my light, that don't even make sense. So it's my my reading. Can you change the laser to cut that way? Not in front of my light burn. I, I don't understand that one. Sorry, I just don't. Between my brain and your question, that lost me on that one. Uh, pop Pop up, your boss is calling. If you're still here, the file will be put online and will be available for free until midnight. In fact, your boss is calling. Uh, edit. Uh, let's see here. Pop up is a regular viewer and contributor. So I'm going to take care of Pop up. We're going to go. I wasn't going to do this yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get this done. All products. Uh, edit and publish. And let's see here. Nope, go back to here and come over here. I want to check this for Pop Pop. His boss is calling. I got one of them, but my boss got four legs and a tail. And she's really good about not bossing me around. Uh, okay. So the heart compass is up, and it is free right now to download. And it'll be free until midnight. Uh, for those watching the live stream, anybody that catches it between now and midnight, it'll be free to download. Uh, and while I'm here, this is the other design that I did this week. It's uh, just a round uh, seashell and flip-flops. There we go. Uh, 
this princess wears flip flops and you can change the name from Myrtle beach to Miami beach to whatever you want. But that one was a design I did this week. All right. So squirrel. All right. Uh, so there you go. Pop pop. It's up. Carl. So the actual finished file is cut at a 45 degree angle. Yeah. So that's what I demonstrated there. The material I still put in the corner of the bed, but I rotated the pieces that are going to be cut 45 degrees so that when they were on the laser bed, yeah, that line was horizontal. So this was cut out 45s instead of straight 90s. Looking for question marks, questions. Can you change the laser to cut at 45 degrees? Can you change? Uh, well, I think I answered, or just by rotating your piece, it's going to cut it at 45 degrees. Do, 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 do. Cutting the age, you could, in theory, mod the module so it is at a 45 degree angle. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah, physically altering the, the laser so that that would rotate the module itself, and then but it's a whole lot easier just to rotate your, your design. You ain't got to go changing it. And, and really, this only comes into play when you're messing with curve, you know, uh, you know, and how, you know, 90% of you never do, never have, to, you know, 60% uh, of you probably have never even heard of curve. I think he is asking if you can make the laser cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where do you find the file? Uh, the file, the files, all my files are on. Uh, let's see, I'll put it in the comments here. HTTPS. Uh, come on now. Hobowithwood.com. All right. Now. Let's go over to the puzzle page. We're an hour and a half already. Uh, this will be kind of quick. Uh, in fact, before we do that, go back over here to the work table. And let's look at this. I cut out because here, here's the thing. I, I tried to, I, when somebody presents a problem to me, if they if they actually have a file that they're having a problem with, I, I ask them, send me the file so I can see it. I want to see it. I want to see what it's doing. I want to replicate, duplicate it, simulate, emulate. I want to I want to see it. I want to do it. I want to see it. So when people were telling me they were having problems with their laser cutting out these puzzle pieces and it was just too tight, I, I started to play with it and see, okay, well, what do I need my curve to be in order for it to work good with my laser? Turned out I didn't need to do anything. And this worked out okay without having to modify it in any way. I was able to do what Steve Ventori did, and it worked fine. And that's what I'm going to show you over here. I've And I checked it because material can make a difference. I checked it on two different types of material. So switch. And I'm going to get I'm trying to make it easier for you to see here. So I've got uh, I cut out a four piece puzzle. And I did not do anything. I did not add any curve to this. I went straight to the website and just cut out the four piece puzzle, downloaded the image and send it to the laser, and this cuts out, and these, this was cut out of three millimeter Baltic birch, and it's actually a little bit loose. I definitely don't need to add any curve to it. 
it's actually a little loose and a, a toddler might have some trouble with it but an adult definitely does not and and if, if anything i might would maybe add a little outward curve to this if i was going to cut this puzzle out and then wanted to do something where i saved it glued it all up and then put it and framed it i might want to get rid of some of those excess that excessive gap there but this is out of three millimeter baltic birch this is chipboard i went down to hobby lobby and picked up a chipboard and this is <clears throat> 0.9 millimeters or right at one millimeter thick. And it also went together without any problems. I didn't have to fight it or force it. If anything, it also is a little bit loose for what for what it is. But whenever whenever Steve Ventari did it. His video, he didn't add any additional kerf. He didn't talk about it. In the video that Rich did, he didn't add any kerf to it. His 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 file didn't come straight from this website. It was it was different. And I'll show you how to create that the way he had it right now. So first, let's go over to, um, I'm going to copy this and put it in the comments. Copy, paste, and send. So this is the website I'm going to now. Uh, Okay. And just looking at questions here um, before I switch over. Um, yeah, Stacy, try refreshing. Uh, Stacy says she couldn't find the heart compass. If you refresh, it should be there. All right. So now let's go over to this website. Hmm, this one and this one. All right. So this is a jigsaw. It's a free jigsaw puzzle generator. And from what I understand, the seed in a jigsaw puzzle generator is the design of the puzzle. If you wanted to have, if you had a puzzle that was... Uh, if you had two puzzles, you had one that had Donald Duck on it and one that was Mickey Mouse, and you used the same seed to cut out Donald and Mickey, you could interchange the pieces in the puzzles. They would, and, and you could put them together, no problem. That's the way I understand what the seed is. It's the pattern that is in this particular software. So if you wanted, I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to have a puzzle, the same exact puzzle, you would use that same seed number every time. Um, your tab size is just what it says, is the size of your tab here. And as you increase it, you I'm on now. There we go. Select it. And once you select that one, as you start to see, you can make your tabs bigger, larger. And you can make them up to 30% of the size of your puzzle piece but that's going to make that really really tight in there so i would not do that and then your jitter i'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better your jitter is this is almost at a 90 degree angle coming almost straight out there if you change your jitter it's going to start to skew everything and and make it uh not so that you have you you have fewer or less or no straight edges. And then your corner radius is your outer corner radius. 
your tiles, how many, what size do you want your puzzle to be? Or how many, how many tiles you want 15 by 10 and then your overall size. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a four by four and we're going to just make it 50 by 50 millimeters so that we've just got a nice, easy piece to work with and download this SVG. It just went to my download folder. I can come back over here to Quick or to QuickBooks. <laughs> come back over here to Lightburn. Import. The most recent one was the Jigsaw there. Say okay. Now, that's what it has brought into Lightburn. It's got three layers in here. Obviously, you see the black layer, then the blue, and the number 10 layer. I'm going to select the black layer and put it on my two cut layers. So now it's just easier to see everything. But this, if you did zero kerf on everything, I'm going to, that's exactly how I cut out, uh, see, put that in line mode, zero kerf, put that in line mode, and zero kerf. Say so, okay. So that's actually how I cut out my test piece that you've seen a minute ago. I did not add any additional kerf, and this is a line. It's one straight. This, this was the problem that the guy was having earlier. He was trying to add kerf to a line, and you cannot add kerf to a line because it don't know inside or outside from a line. These are all individual lines except for the perimeter. That's a shape. So if you find that your kerf on your laser, if you're using a 5-watt laser, you're going to have a spot size that's much smaller than my 20-watt laser. And your kerf may be considerably smaller than my kerf. And when you try to cut this puzzle out, you may find yourself in the same situation that they found. They couldn't get the puzzle to go together easily or at all and definitely could not have a toddler put it together. It was going to be way too tight. So let me see what's going on here. I got a lot of questions or see. Uh, old guy, <laughs> where is the compass on your site? Home file file. Uh, 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 switch and go, no, go here. We go to the website. As soon as you load the website, the home page should show you the new products. And right there is the newest thing. I just put it up. There's the heart compass right there on the home page. If you're not seeing that when you go to hobowithwood.com, then you're not loading the most recent. You're loading a cache file or something. Uh, hit refresh in your menu bar, and it should pop up right there. Uh, and if you're not seeing it there, for whatever reason, I don't know why, You because you should, you can go to digital files and then go all the way down to the bottom. And search right here, heart, enter. And it's going to show you five results with hearts. And there's the heart compass. There's I love you. There's the, that's one's the one that's also on sale. The mandala shot through the heart. And Cupid is stupid. And there's the princess. Uh, I don't know why that showed up. Oh, because I got heart in the description. So hopefully that will help you find that old guy. Do, 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 do. So, okay, I don't see downloads. What am I missing? Hopefully you're still with us and you, you, you all right, found it in the search. Thanks. No, oh, thank you. Uh, Yeah, and Jeff uh, also, Control-F5 will force a refresh 
Uh, the refresh button in your browser might not do it, but if you do a control F5, that should most definitely bring it up. Okay, now back to how do you add kerf to a line? How do you add kerf to a line? Anybody got any ideas? You can't add kerf to a line. So how how are we going to add kerf to that? How are we going to make that work easy? No ideas? All right. This is how you do it. Yep. Craig and, and Chris both just got it. Offset. 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 So switch. And uh, Jeff, th that would work slightly if you took yours and you did a, uh, a pre-focus, raise your focus a little bit and got a larger dot size that would uh, create a little bit larger. But that's not not a guarantee that it's going to work. And if you and it would not work if you really want to make it large enough that a toddler is going to put these together. So the way you do that is I can't remember if I was successful. I know I didn't I didn't do the outer one for with this. I did the inner lines, just the lines first. And if we go to offset, you already see that that's way too big, but you see what's happening there. So if we do a point oh two offset. So you're creating a gap in there, 0 0.05, say OK. And now you've got, oh, one thing I didn't do, undo, undo. All right, a couple of, couple of potential roadblocks. If you grab your verticals, and do an offset, delete the original objects, say OK, and you did your horizontals, and did the offset, delete the original object, say OK. If you walk in here and look, those are not married. They're not merged. So you want to grab them all, do an offset, the desired offset you're looking for, and then delete your original objects. And make sure you use corners because, right, see how this all comes to a corner? If you tell it you want round, well, and bevel, this is small enough that it ain't making a, much of a difference. But if you went too much larger on your offset, it might. So make sure you use corners, outward offset, and say, okay, and delete the original. Now that is an individual piece. Well, actually, because we did offsets, they're going to be all grouped. So if you ungroup that, ungroup, oh, I forgot. It did this offset up here. So yes. And actually, you know what? I think I did in order to, yeah, that's right. That's right. So come back here to your outer piece. Now do an offset inward because you want to make sure you come down here inside here. You want to get all this. Do not delete the original. Say OK. Now group both of those. And now you want to use your Boolean tools. And use your Boolean assistant. And you're going to want to look for the one that's going to give you and actually see what's happening here where we got this little oddball piece up there. I shouldn't have grouped those. I'm going to select those, ungroup them. And now that those are not grouped, I can select just the inner piece and say A, 
hold my shift button and select the inner piece. That's B. So that's A subtract B or this one over here. And that gives me a nice clean cut and this does not affect my perimeter. And now I've got the outward piece that will serve as my frame. If I do an offset outward of a half inch or, or uh, yeah, half inch, come on now, or 0.12 millimeters. Did it not, not 0.12, not 0.12, 12, dummy. Way to go, dummy. Offset 12 millimeters. And that's way too big for this piece. But that would give me my frame. Come on. For the puzzle to set in. And those are individual pieces now. If I ungroup. There's just one piece. There's one piece. And now you've got that larger kerf in there that's going to make it toddler friendly. And or depending on your material, if you're using, you know, quarter inch wood or something and you need a, a larger kerf than what your laser is going to work. And before you go wasting your time trying to cut out a 50 piece puzzle or a 150 piece puzzle, you need to know what you need that kerf to be. So cut out a four piece puzzle like I did over there on the table. And, and don't do your test on a piece of one and a half millimeter basswood and then say, okay, this works great. It's great. Now I'm going to cut this out of my 4.7 millimeter birch from Lowe's and expect it to have the same result. You need to test your fittings and your cut sizes and your offset on the material you're going to design it with. And then when you know you've got a good fit and it's going to work the way you want it to, then go create that 150 piece puzzle. You know how aggravated you'd be if you cut out 150 pieces and only find out you can't get them to part or get them to go back together again. Yeah, that'd be ill. That'd be ill, ill, ill. So, uh, And looks like control F5 was not the right one. One of the F5, maybe it's not, maybe it's not control F5, maybe it's just F5. So I think it was the F5, it seems right. But one of them, uh, I don't, and I don't know why you're just hitting refresh isn't making your cache refresh that website, but search and you'll find it. If you guys aren't finding it, search. All right, so that's all I've got with that, the curve and the puzzles. Uh, now for, let's, in fact, a little bit of housework in addressing some questions about the website. I don't care where you live. I don't want your phone number. I have no desire to ever come and visit you or send you anything or mail you anything. <clears throat> I'm not the one asking for it. The payment processor is the one asking for it. And I have checked this with a few others. If you put in there that your Pinocchio at 123 Magic Lane in, in Never Never Land, Florida, and your phone number is uh, whatever area code it is, 555-1212, put in a fake phone number, it works. I know If you don't want to put your personal information in when you're buying from hobowithwood.com, don't put it in there. If the payment processor accepts it, I don't want it. I don't need it. Uh, and my feelings aren't hurt when you put in something bogus. But the only thing that you have to have correct is your email. Because when you do purchase from hobowithwood.com, as soon as you make your purchase and you press payment, if you wait 1,001, 1,002, 
That's, and just wait. Payment process is going to do what it's supposed to do, and your page is going to refresh. And when it refreshes, it's going to have an option right there. It says, click here to download your file. And you can download your file right there. But if you put in your correct email address, you're going to get a payment confirmation in the email and, and possibly it'll be a payment confirmation and a link in that payment confirmation on click here to download. So you can download from your email or if you wait for it to refresh, it will you can download it there. You put in the wrong email, you ain't going to not only you're not only not going to get your receipt or your option to download through the email. You may or may not have any luck when you go try to log back in if you don't remember what you did or how you did what you did. So the email is the only thing that's really important. And I strongly encourage you, I, 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 for those, when you create your account, you're supposed to be able to log back into your account and see your payments and your purchases. But I've had people who sign up and they have multiple accounts. They've got two different emails. Uh, I'm I'm hobo at Gmail and then I'm hobo769 at AOL.com. And you got them both set up in the website. One's got purchase history and one don't. Well, if you log into the one that don't and you say, well, I can't see none of my files. Well, you're in the wrong account. It's not on me. That was something that you did. You screwed it up. I didn't do it. So pay attention to what you're doing. But I strongly suggest that you download the files and you either save them in a folder that you have organized or you've got them in a, a, a drop drive, flash drive, an external drive, whatever. And don't rely on my website for you to be able to log in and go get your files anytime you need them. Because I'm the one that's trying to control that and, and create it. And I've screwed it up already a couple of times. Uh so if you have downloaded 15 or 20 files and you don't have them saved, you should probably why you go in there and get them and get them saved in a place that you can have access to them and don't rely on my site to always go get them. Hopefully you'll never have a problem, but I'd rather you have them and not need them than to need them and not be able to get them. Um, the website, switch. Uh, come on now. So the way this is supposed to work, anytime you go to the home page, the most recent files should be the ones that populate here as long as you're loading a fresh page. If you've got something, and I, I don't know, I don't know anything about cookies or all that stuff. But if you've got something set up so that it prevents it from loading, if if you download or if you if you logged into this page last week, and your computer recognizes you were there last week, and that's the page it populates for you, well, you should be able to hit the refresh up here and see the latest file. But I think it is just F5, not Control F5. But I think just F5. Yeah, I think F5 is what's supposed to force you to reload the last uh, most up-to-date page. But I've got this file for free right now until midnight, the heart compass. Uh, and like I said, the, um, in fact, go back down to the search bar and search heart not Harry, Art. So that one's the one that's free. And the Mandala. That's not free. It's, uh, come on now, what am I doing? Trying to scroll in or out. If I go to that one, this one is half price right now. And I like that round. I like my six shooter in the hearts, uh, but that's half price. And if I, somebody, I forget who it was. I wish my memory was better, but somebody actually seen my princess cowboy boots and they asked me to do one with flip flops. 
So there's my flip-flops, princess and flip-flops, and it's a big seashell. And the seashell is actually a bunch of seashells around it that make up the big seashell. And that one is online and available, isn't That one's new since last week. All right, so now let's look for any questions. Question mark. On puzzles, can you glue a picture? Yes. On the plywood and flip it over to the plywood and cut it? Yes, 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 yes. In fact, if I had time, I was planning to do just that. Uh, because a lot of folks, you'll see them, they're doing uh, just a laser engraving and an image on there and cutting it out. And, and that's nice and neat. But yeah, uh, you want to test, 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 test. So don't go get your family photo from 1950 that you cannot replace and glue it on a piece of wood and can go see what happens. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd go online to walgreens.com and upload the photos that I'm needing and send the order across and go down and pick them up already printed and ready to go. Order two or three copies. So you can put those on the board and test and find, make sure that everything's going to work and it's not going to just score and burn that away. But, you know, I do, uh, I do card stock all the time. That's gold card stock or construction paper that's glued to plywood there and there and now one thing i would suggest when you're doing with paper don't you do want to flip it over and cut it from the back but lift your material off of the honeycomb if you do not have uh some hold downs something similar to this you need to get some uh I don't know. These came from Rich Louisiana Hobby Guy. He was selling them at one time. I don't know if he's selling them anymore, but I think you can get the file from him or other places. But the way it works is your material will slide in there. These have got magnets on it, and that'll hold your material up off of the bed. And the reason I say you do that is because when you lay it face down, and if you have any flashbacks any popping then you're going to be scoring and and getting soot all over your photograph and burnt edges wrong so raise your material off the bed yeah it depends on which browser which keys yeah and if it's mac or if it's apple or if it's pc or yeah uh <laughs> they also, big number forgot where i am again okay so you learned a lot that's awesome and uh somebody uh did a super thanks uh i seen it whenever i was talking and i missed it so i'm not going to scroll back up but thank you to whoever that was in fact guys uh if you're not uh going to be jumping over and buying any files uh show there are the ways that you can help uh, contribute to the. Uh, oh, I forgot. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I got I got time. I got more. We, I got time. We only been here two hours, and we went three hours over the night. Didn't want to, but we did. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I'm glad you learned a lot. Uh, if you go to Hobo with Wood and sign in, go to files, and on the right side, there's a drop down arrow. Click on it and click. okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, no, thank you for hanging out and thank you for, for hanging around. I hope, I hope you learned a little bit of stuff tonight. We talked about uh, quite a bit. Uh, I downloaded the compass and it said that it couldn't find the font that it was, that is on it. Okay. Uh, I used love letters. The font is called love letters. In fact, <laughs> Clack had a video. I haven't watched his video yet today, but Clack had a video on how to load fonts to Lightburn. 
So let's go do that. We're going to shift over our attention and I'm going to go to the font. Thefont.com. And I'm going to search for love letters. Enter. And there's so many options here. Which one? I'm pretty sure I used love letters. How many options are there here? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, oh, I got an idea. Uh, let's go back over here real fast. Let's get rid of this. And let's go. All right. We're going to import e-commerce. That was the heart compass. So I've got, I'm curious about something. If I open this folder, this is the light burn file and say open. So the font it's looking for is this. And love heart, not love letters, love heart. There we go. So defont.com. And love heart. There it is. Heart. No, right here. Love heart. Not heart love, but love heart. Now, you're in defont.com. You just come over here and say download. And it's up here. Now it's already downloaded. And... I'm going to, and if you, if yours does, if you're not using this browser, you can always just go to wherever your downloads go and go to your download folder. And there is that download. It's in a compressed folder. If I double click it, and then there is the font file right there. Double click it. And then right here is my button up here at the top. Click in. Oh, I'm in the wrong window. You guys didn't see any of that. So I go into my download folder. Find that download. There it is. Find the true font file. Double click it. And then I'm using Windows uh, right here. I can click install. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to install it now. Click install. And then once you do, it should be in Lightburn. If it's not in Lightburn, close Lightburn, open Lightburn back up, and then you will have the Love Heart font. But if you don't want to install that font, I'm curious about uh, bringing, instead of bringing it in in a Lightburn, in fact, it should work. So we're going to go new. I don't want to save anything. In fact, uh, Carl, if you have not, if you've not already gone to defont.com and downloaded Love Heart Font, don't yet, because I want you to try this. Somebody or multiple people who have already downloaded the file, try this and let me know how it works. <clears throat> when you're trying to open it up in the Lightburn folder, the Lightburn file, it's looking for that font and you don't have it. So it's going, I don't know what to do. What, what, what? <clears throat> but I also have it in there as an SVG. And I'm curious if by exporting it from Lightburn to an SVG, did that change that from a font to a line? And it's no longer going to recognize that as a font at all. It will not be, um, and, and if it did, it won't be editable, but you should be able to import it regardless if you've got the font or not, but like, I'm going to try it, but I've already got the font, but you know what? I should be able to tell auto. So I'm going to import and I'm going to import the SVG, which is this one down here. Open. 
And now I should be able to ungroup all that. And yeah, see, that's not recognizing it as a font anymore. That's now a line. Yeah. So that'll work. If you do not, if, if you go to open up any of my files and it comes up with the error message, it says, hey, we don't know what you're doing because we don't recognize that font and we're confused and <laughs> don't worry about trying to install the light burn file, import the SVG. You won't be able to edit the text, at least my, not my text, but you'll be able to edit. You can delete it and put whatever you want to on there. But that's one way to get around that. And I just seen something that the folks that if they're still here and uh, old man, old, is old guy, old guy, old man, so he, he's not going to benefit from this. But this is something you need to be aware of when you do make this file. Uh, now, I put the instructions on the screen, but that doesn't mean anything. This is a six layer piece. And this is the back. This is a spacer just to create an extra space between the compass and the backboard, just to give it added depth and to create another shadow of the compass on the backboard. I just like the way that looks. But these are the bands that I put on the side. Now the lengths or the height of these bands are gonna be correct depending on the thickness of your material. Adjust the width to fit your project, and it probably should be the width and height because these here, you can see, are 290 millimeters in height, and that's correct for these two. But for the other two, they need to be higher and or taller, and they need to be doubled the, the, the thickness of the material in each direction. So if you were working with six millimeter or three millimeter wood, then these would need to be six millimeters longer than these. And come back over and, and that's that, that's the height. But the width I've got here is 17 millimeters because the material thickness of the six pieces of my material was 17 millimeters. So the bands, if you decide... You may not even want to do the bands. You know, some folks will take, I, I've seen Rich, he just paints his black. They already got the burnt edges on it. But if you paint paint the edges, you're going to have some, you know, overrun or you'll see some overspray on the edges. So you may actually have to go back and paint them. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to cover them up and give it a more finished look. So... The bands, if you use the bands, you may, you're may you going to have to measure, glue it all up, get your six pieces all glued up, ready to go. Cut your bands out last. Glue that all together. Then once it's glued up, then take and mic it. And now you know what your width is. Two of them are going to be, unless you change it, unless you shrink it down, two, on the, two of them on the sides are going to be 290. But if we look... You got that one's going to be coming over the top, and that one comes out over the top. So you got to take that in consideration when you're making your bands. Uh, so that's that. Now, questions, questions, questions. Oh, and I hadn't forgot about Bigfoot. <laughs> You guys are going to love this when we get down there to it. I was going to get through these questions, but this 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 is an awesome piece. I I only wish that I could claim this. It's not mine. I can't claim it. I wished I could because it's genius. Uh, did you use your pens to color that comp? No, uh, I painted it. Painted it with rattle cans. In fact, I pre-painted it. Uh, I pre-painted each layer and then put it on the laser and cut it out. I even pre-painted the pink and engraved the black through the pink paint. Now that put now my paint was, you know, it was good and dry. 
you know, I didn't paint it and go straight to the laser. Everything was cured, it was good and dry. And there was a lot of soot all over that pink. A little bit of water, just a wet rag and just wiped it right off there and it cleaned up nice and tight. All of it looks really good. But pre-painting all of it before I even took it to the laser. And these hearts up in the corner, the purple hearts are actually attached to the purple backboard, but the other ones are free floating free pieces. And I think these pink hearts are actually these pink hearts from the top. Uh, and I think the red ones are in the design. You have, and, but you know, those are the, the white, the red and the pink are not attached. They're stacked right on top of each other and they're independent pieces. Uh, but I pre-painted everything. Yeah, Tom, I'm going to show you Bigfoot. I hope you're still with us because this is a genius piece. Will I still be able to print the font even if I don't have it on my in my list? No, we, I just showed you that. Uh, you can download it from the font. But if you import the SVG, yes, it's going to print just like you see it. Don't do the Lightburn file. Do the SVG. <laughs> okay uh yeah uh chris says that uh patrick is now making and selling them so uh if you have the laser matic mk2 uh the feet on my <laughs> I can't can't get you that. There we go. I've got the risers on my MK2. Those came from Patrick. And Patrick's also got the file from uh, Rich, Louisiana Hobby Guy. And he's printing these out as well. So you can get the uh, hold downs from Patrick. And I screwed this up the other night, but I'm going to get it right this time. It's light source dot pro https that's in the comments light source dot pro is where you can get the hold downs the risers uh bah, 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 bah. yep yep pat has the hold downs now yes uh, do to do, do, do. Uh, no, uh, the font is not a subscription site. Sub subscription site. Uh, they have. Uh, some free downloads. Um, some of them have restrictions that are they're for personal use and not for commercial use. Uh, some of them are demos and not full fonts. Um, and they're, but you even those that have the ones that are not for commercial use, you can buy those for commercial use, which I will do so that I don't have to worry about if. I want to do what I do when I do what I do. Uh, Lightburn will treat it as a path for fonts not found. Uh, I don't know. Will it, will it, does that, will it bring in that exact same font or does it put it up something different when you bring it in as a Lightburn file, Chris? I, I can't remember. Will he have the same result? bringing in the Lightburn file that I did when I brought it in as an SVG. Okay, an old guy. Old guy says he's done it before. There we go. And it's worked. So, yeah, the difference is when it does not recognize the font, it will just bring that in as a line or as a path. You will not be able to edit the font it'll be what it is unless you just delete it and put in your own font. 
Yes. There you go. Just what Jeff said. Ditto, ditto, ditto. I still hear. <laughs> All right. Uh, general font question. I use Lightburn on three computers. Unfortunately, each computer has a different fonts installed on it. Is there any way to keep all three computers fonts in sync? I, 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 you could probably copy your font folder because your fonts are in a, a, their own folder, whichever one you want to be on all, and you copy that one and put install it on the other three. But I don't think, and if, you're, and that's a network question, and and, and there might be. And, and is it Windows? Is it Mac? Is it this? I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, that's Chris Jesse. The best you can do is have one, one as a master and make sure all fonts go there. Then copy Windows fonts folder to the other machines. Yep, man. Chris is a he is a wealth of knowledge. He really is. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and there's Patrick's website, lightsource.pro. Get your hold downs, get your risers. Uh, Lightburn converts fonts to a path when you open the file with a font that's not installed on your computer. Yep. Yep. If you're not going to take the bottom, if you're, if you're not going to take the bottom plate, what's the purpose of the risers? Uh, well, <clears throat> storage space, number one. And if you are going, and I was doing a lot with the rotary and testing, and yeah, you, you need that out in order to be able to take that bottom plate out. You need the risers to lift it up. That's the biggest reason for having it. But then when I'm not using my rotary now with the risers on there, I can put my rotary and everything underneath the MK1, or the MK2. And I see a lot of people in the Roly Automation Facebook group, they're building cabinets and drawers and all kinds of stuff that this will set on and then you can pull a drawer out and then you've got a place that they've got it all nice and neat and organized i'm i'm not going to that trouble but they look really nice and professional and look good but that's just one benefit is getting it up you got it off your table now you get underneath there for storage space do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. One man's trivia is another man's, you know, a lifesaver at times. Uh, all right. Now I want to show you guys this file. No, it's not a file. It's a project. I got a couple pieces, but I think I saved this week. But this one is, <laughs> I love it. As soon as he sent me this, I was like, oh man, I wish I'd have thought of that. Uh, all right. Go away, go away. I need to make you minimized and I need, where are you at? Where are you at? Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding. There it is. All right. There. Bring you back up there. All right. So. Now I need to switch. So these are two files that uh, were sent to me this week. This is a play on the I love you heart that I did. He did, uh, you know, a bride and groom in the background instead of it just being a plain silhouette. And that looked really nice. I said, that's, that's pretty. That's cool. But this one. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. He added a UFO to the Sasquatch. The only thing that I might would have done that I would have been just a slightly better maybe is if come in here and create a little bit of a, a, 
a triangular funnel like like it's the uh, the light beam coming out of it. You know, it would be behind him, but when you're standing in front of it, looking at it, it's like the lights coming out of the bottom of the UFO. You know, at Bigfoot, but that's uh, Jeff's Sasquatch, and that is wicked, 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 wicked. Uh, let's see, is Jeff? Yes, that's uh, Jeff Benedict. Isn't that yours, Jeff? You still with us? Isn't that yours? I got Jeff B up here. I think it's Jeff Benedict. But is that not the most hilarious thing you've ever seen? I think it's awesome. Uh, let's see. Questions? Any questions? Any questions? We're 220 in here. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Well, yes, we got a comment slash question. And see, yeah, uh, hey, Steve, don't forget about your truck slash heart door corner pieces of Valentine's Project. Squirrel. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go here. Go here. And switch you back to here. Go back to that one and search for truck. There's the farm truck. Oh, you know, I don't I don't have that one on my website. I need to get that up. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, or did I not? I got to have that on there. I know I've got it on there. Or did it? Maybe that was just the free file that we did uh, on uh, Laser Maker's Realm. Door. There's the unicorn. There's the squirrel. Yeah, I don't, I don't have that on here. Huh. Okay. Thank you, Miss Stacy. I do need to. I've got a. Uh, get out of the way. The ADHD squirrel. Uh, ADHD. Uh, that one was just there. Highway to, oh, look, squirrel. <laughs> uh, I've got another one that's the uh, farm truck. And the farm truck is on the cor top corner of the door and out of the bed, all the hearts are falling out of it. I need to get that back out and modify it a little bit, improve it some from where it was on the laser maker's realm and get it on the website. I need to do that. Thank you, Miss Stacy. Uh, I've been in a fog for the last week and a half. Uh, finally done with the day quill. I'm feeling much better. All right. Let's see. Questions, 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 questions. Do, 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 do. Nope. All right. Uh, yeah. And. Thanks for the shout out. I'm working on a clock with that design too. So Jeff Benedict, that was his UFO and uh, Bigfoot. And Chris says the UFO is how Bigfoot visits home. Yeah, uh, I I I really I I love that design. That I uh, very much so. I I like that a lot. You did very good. A very very good job. Uh. And Stacy says she got that. The she Stacy's got the version. In fact, <clears throat> here's the truck. Now the truck. I'm pretty sure the truck is on the website. This is a 3D version of the truck, and uh, I use that and put different, like fall. It's, it's full of pumpkins. You know, Christmas. There's a Christmas tree laid down in it. Uh, elf on a shelf sitting in here. Uh, but this is already on the website. But the one dimensional version for the corner door trim has, of course, just one side of the truck. And then on the bed of the truck, it, the bed's full of hearts, and the hearts are falling out down the side of the door sill. Uh, 
And that one I gave away on Laser Maker's Realm. That was a really basic file, uh, kind of like that one. So I'll probably do another version this week where if you look at this, you can see it's actually three-dimensional. See, the fenders are separate pieces. The tires and the hubcaps are all separate pieces. I will do, you can see how the tires are thicker than the, uh, I'll probably do a three-dimensional piece and then have the hearts falling out of it and another door trim. And that'll be a good one because you can see, you can barely see it on with this camera, but the stake bed is a checkerboard. I've done that so it looks like it's more of a wood grain on the bed, the, the stake bed. So that'd be a good, that'd be a good file for next week. So that'd be what I look at and then show how to create these print like this. So thank you, Miss Stacy. Uh, I like that tiger. Well, that's a lion. Uh, I like that lion in the background. Have not been able to find it on your site. Yeah, now that is that that's on a mirror, and the batteries are dead right now. But that actually lights up, and when it lights up, it's really beautiful because that's from a extremely high definition black and white photograph uh, that I got online. And that lion, I think that was a 16. It might have been, it was, it was between 12 and 16 hours on the 10 watt laser that we shall not name. Uh, but that was a long, long burn, long burn. Uh, but that turned out really nice. Uh, but it was so long. Uh, that's, that was like the, a, a day of testing and then an entire day of printing. I won't do another one. Mm -mm -mm. Carl, Laser Makers Realm, 3 p.m. tomorrow. Giveaway Pat's Laser Matic. I would love to see that go away tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, will be Laser Makers Realm. You'll want to be there. And here, for the 94 of you that are still here, The trick on getting Patrick to give away his laser is the magic number is what? 275 viewers and 275 likes. Now, I gave away my laser already, my, my MK1, and that's what he's giving away is his MK1. If there's two of you in the household and you both have Google accounts, husband and wife, father and son, husband and mistress, whatever, both of you get logged into your YouTube accounts or your Google accounts. Go over to YouTube. Both of you just click on it. And, and even if you just open it and one of you is not even watching that browser because you're watching it on this one. And both of you open it and both of you like it. There's two of you in your household. Now, instead of two people, instead of one person watching, there's two of you watching. Well, we've always got 122, you know, even we've had 200 and some. But if everybody did that, then boom, you're done. But if you want to make double sure, have call call, call, if, call your son who doesn't live in the house with you. Hey, I need you to do me a favor. Go over here. Now, they do need to be online during the giveaway to win. So if you have somebody log in and it's you, your wife, and your son, and your son's out in the yard playing volleyball, as long as you see that whenever we say, okay, we are now announcing the giveaway. If your son's not there in the household with you, you want to at least have the ability to be able to log into his account and say, hey, I'm here. Because if we draw the name of Timbuk2 at blackbeard.com, Timbuk2, are you here? You put your hand up, say you're here. If you can't say, boom, I'm here under that name, then we're going to draw somebody else. So you, who, however many people you get log in, you want to make sure that they're go. And it, and if we're doing our live stream and we hit two seventy five viewers and two hundred seventy five likes, no matter what we're doing, we're going to stop 
and give away that laser right then. And the more people you can have to log in for you, even if they don't want the laser, that's more chances you have of winning. So 275 viewers and 275 likes, and we'll stop everything immediately and give away the MK1. Somebody will have a very nice laser because the when I'm doing the engraving with this, I'll do it on 10 watts. I'm, I'm only using the 20 watts when I'm cutting. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, and actually, V, yikes, would higher wattage be quicker on the mirrors? Uh, it possibly, but I'm telling you, uh, that was such a such a high resolution. In fact, I did so many tricks on that to make that look as good as it looks. I pre I, I call it pre-focus. I pre-focused it. So I had it slightly out of focus above where your premium optimal focus is at. So I had it pre-focused. And then I did like uh instead of 318 lines per inch, I think I did like 500 lines per inch. So I had a larger dot size. It was overlapping itself two or three times. That's why it took forever. But I did such a high, high, high resolution. And the, and the settings that way I had them, that's why it took as long as it did. But the outcome is, is it's like it was done on uh, a, a fiber laser. Now, uh, I needed a photo done the other day. And I did not have time to get everything done before light burn experience. I needed to get a one of the purses made for Patrick and I needed to get this mirror done with a photo on it. So I had Patrick do the photograph on the mirror with his fiber laser and he knocked it out with the fiber laser like that. And that's the reason I also won't do it with these anymore. It just takes too long, but the fiber laser, man, as fast as those things are, you know, he knocked that thing out in no time flat and it looked super, super nice. Uh, there you go, Jeff. Yeah. And, and that's another thing you guys, <laughs> I've got three or four Gmail accounts myself. If you've got multiple Gmail accounts, log into YouTube on four different tabs on under four different users, all of them, you can and mute three of them and like all three of those and then go back to your primary and watch it from there. And because it's all we're doing is we're trying to get the analytics up there and it's just the viewers. It's all, it's all trying to get the numbers up. Yeah, we're not going to have actually 275 people there, but the analytics aren't going to know that. So we're not we're not encouraging you to cheat. We're encouraging you to help us get the numbers up in the analytics. And the more accounts you've got and the more often you can log in, the more options you've got of winning. And then, and then Jeff, if you've got four accounts, you've got all four of them open, three of them are muted. So you're not getting feedback from three different browsers that you're listening to. And you're watching this one, but this is the winning one and it's yours. You just click out of that, go to that browser and say, Hey, I'm here. Done. In fact, I've got one Gmail account <laughs> that I use just for like a minute ago when I said, I don't want your information. I don't care about your information. I don't even want your email. I don't need it. You need it in order to be able to log in. But for those stupid MVP cards or VIP cards that you have to get when you go to the grocery store, I've got one uh, that's... Uh, <laughs> Just a fictitious name that's and I'm not even I'm not gonna give it out because I it's it's hilarious, but that's all I use it for. And whenever the, you know, I'm like, I don't want to give this to you, but you wanna you want an email? Okay, well, here it is. And they're like, seriously? And I'm like, yep, that's my email. Put it in if you want it. There you go. That's my email. And I only use it for that.
you're always in a fog. That's how you come up with with good stuff. Uh, it is. It's. It's. But thank you. Yeah, Carl. Carl says he does fine with five and a half watts on mirrors, and I and because I do think that uh, when you're doing mirrors. It's not about more power and faster because if you're really wanting to do detail, that 10 watt and the five and a half watt, when you're doing really fine detailed work, the lower the power, the better. It's slower, but you get more detail. Yeah, and that's what Chris says. For high resolution jobs, he uses this five watt. Yeah, not as fast as a 10 watt, but just great. Yeah, it you, you yeah. Okay, time for bed. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Uh all right, guys. Guys, I appreciate you hanging around with me. We're getting out of here tonight, two and a half hours instead of three hours. I hope everybody learned a little something, something. And if whoever it was that did the, the super thanks, thank you for that. I did not, I seen it, but I didn't want to stop because I'll get distracted in a minute and didn't want to, I seen it, but I didn't want to stop because I didn't want to get sidetracked because I get sidetracked so easy. So thank you for whoever did that super thanks guys. The file is free for another 25 minutes, give or take. If you haven't downloaded it, get over there now and download that file because after midnight, it'll be half price. All right. Uh, ba, ba, ba. And yep. Oh, hey, that this before I go, go we still got 88 over here. Uh, Hobo with Wood uh, on YouTube. I did. I had 8,000 subscribers on YouTube. I've not even been doing this for two years yet. They say most people struggle to even get monetized or with they struggle to even get 4,000. Uh, is it 4,000 or 5,000? 1,000. They struggle to even get 1,000 subscribers in a year. You got to get 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And I did it in like four months, four and a half months. Now we're not even at two years, and I'm already at 8,000. <laughs> if, if, my, my anniversary date is, I, I just use Father's Day, because Father's Day two years ago is when I started this hobo with wood, what, what at the time was a joke. Uh, banners, I put the wrong, no, that's right. Uh and I never guessed it, never thought it would ever become what it's become. But here we are, and it's getting bigger, getting bigger. But if I'm going to really support myself with this, I need it to get much bigger, much bigger. And it's and it's growing faster than the average channel, so I, I don't need to be ungrateful. I am extremely thankful for where we're at. But... If we can hit 10,000 subscribers before my two-year anniversary, I'm working on a deal to give away a laser of my own. Now, I haven't got anything solidified yet, but my laser of choice, and when I say I'm talking about trying to give away your laser, I ain't talking about giving away my used laser. I'm trying to work out a deal. If I can hit 10,000 subscribers before my second anniversary, which will be the Father's Day of this year, I think at Father's Day changes. It's like, like what is it? It's kind of like Thanksgiving. Is it the third, third Tuesday or the third, no, the third, third Sunday of June, something like that. So uh, that's the target date. So if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Mm -hmm. Share this with everybody in your group. Share Hobo with Wood in, in the different groups you're in. Help try to get this channel out there and get it growing. And that'll be just another opportunity that you can have to win you 
a laser if I can close this deal. I'm not pretty sure I'm going to get it closed. All right. So, do, 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 do. Uh, can you make the hearts interchangeable so you could use it for other holidays? Or would you, can you make the hearts interchangeable? Uh, on which file? On on the on this one. Uh, and this one's really not even about Valentine's Day, uh, because it, it just simply says follow your heart, or always follow your heart, or yeah, follow your heart always. Uh, and and actually, it's kind of like. It's kind of like Yoda or Yoda speak. It can be follow your heart always or always follow your heart or uh, your heart, your heart always follow. That's Yoda speak. <laughs> your heart always follow. Uh, and then, but this one don't work. Heart always follow your. That one's the only one that didn't work. Uh, but if it's just, you know, always follow your heart. I mean, it doesn't have to be violent. You, if you painted it different colors, that's immediately, you know, not, if you don't do reds and pinks, it's not Valentine's. Uh, but yeah, you could, you could change the, the design to whatever you wanted it to be. And within the file, if you didn't want it to be hearts. Uh, Chris says, yeah, it's like Easter money. Friday, second full moon after March. Uh, Friday through Monday, second full moon after the first of March. Uh, well, V, uh, you came in late, but you're here with 18 minutes to spare. You need to get over to hobowithwood.com, and this is free for the next 18 minutes. It's a six layer piece. Go over to hobowithwood.com now and download it now for free. And then you can go back and watch the replay of this. And I, I talk about it in detail, not in detail, but explain how it's made and how it's assembled, what you got to look for when you do. I, I, the banding is optional. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, but after midnight, it'll be half price. Do, do, do. All right, guys. We're going to call it. Thank you for hanging out with me this long. I appreciate you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Go over to hobowithwood.com. Get that downloaded for free. Get this one downloaded for half price. It's only like $2.49. And that one I call Shot Through the Heart. Uh, so that one is fun. And if you haven't seen the family tree that I've done. There's a look for the family tree video that I've got on YouTube and it shows how to put names in designs like this. You could take this and use that file and do the same thing with this that I did with the family tree where you put in, you know, you know, couples names or whatever, and you do, do the same thing with the other, the, the compass too. So all kinds of possibilities. I'd love to see what you do, just like the UFO that just J Jeff did on Bigfoot so much. I just wish I would have thought of that. All right. Uh, Jack, you're still here. Uh How many laser people do you know here local? Let's let's get together and let's let's look at doing. I, I can think of about a half a dozen now that hey maybe we do a, a a weekly get together. Get in touch with me, uh, and you're to blame. That's it. Uh, you give love a bad name. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. You guys have a good one.